pro Khalistan chants were raised at Trudeau's rally after the Canadian Prime Minister vouched to protect the rights of Sikhs in Canada. Once again, he alleged India's foul play in Sikh separatist Hardeep Singh Nijjar's killing. This move has irked India and the Canadian diplomat was summoned after the incident. In the latest development in Trump's hush money case, the former American president has been fined $9,000 for violating a gag order in the ongoing case and warned that he can be jailed if he violates the order further. Justice Juan Merkin said the fine may not be enough to serve as a deterrent for the wealthy businessman turned politician and lamented he did not have the authority to impose a higher penalty. Pakistan right-wing Islamic leader Maulana Fazlur Rahman's statement in the Pakistan parliament made headlines in India when he compared the two countries. Highlighting the existing gap between the two countries, he said, quote, India is dreaming of becoming a superpower and we are begging to avoid bankruptcy, unquote. The Indian Coast Guard, in collaboration with Gujarat's anti-terrorism squad and the Narcotics Control Bureau, have seized 86 kilograms of narcotics valued at 600 crore rupees from a Pakistani vessel. The boat was on its way to Sri Lanka via Tamil Nadu. 14 crew members from the Pakistani vessel were also held in the operation. To address the ongoing humanitarian crisis in Gaza, US Secretary of State Antony Blinken was on a Middle East tour where he proposed a ceasefire and urged for humanitarian aid for Gazans. This trip included Blinken's meeting with the leaders of Egypt, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, the United Arab Emirates and the Palestinian Authority. Welcome, you're watching Global Compass. And now in our next segment, let's look into some of the stories that specifically featured on Strat News Global. A 14-year-old boy was killed and four other people were injured after a man with a sword went on a stabbing spree in East London. The police tasered and arrested the man after the incident near Henault in East London. Police said they did not believe the incident was terrorism related and there was no ongoing threat to the wider community. Reportedly, Elon Musk is taking his Tesla to China now. According to the Wall Street Journal's report, he has won tentative approval for the full self-driving software to be introduced in China. This has raised a few eyebrows in India. He was supposed to visit India last week but cancelled the tour at the last minute. On Monday, the Tesla chief met Chinese Premier Li Chang in Beijing in an unannounced visit. In the latest report published by Human Rights Watch, the investigative report highlighted the ongoing massacre in Burkina Faso as part of a campaign against civilians accused of collaborating with jihadist militants. Now America and the United Kingdom have condemned the massacre and asked for a probe. British Royal Sophie, the Duchess of Edinburgh, visited Ukraine to show solidarity with those impacted by the war. This is the first such British Royal visit to Ukraine after the start of the Ukraine-Russia war. During her visit, she highlighted the fact that women and children are the worst affected in any war and sexual abuse and rape are still being used as war weapons. More on the Weinstein case. The notorious film producer appeared in court for the first time after the recent overturning of his 2020 sex crime conviction in New York. Last week, the producer, who remains in jail after being separately convicted of rape in Los Angeles, was moved to the Bellevue Hospital in Manhattan due to bad health. And taking the Harvey Weinstein story forward. We had reported in our previous show that the Appellate Court of New York had overturned the 2020 verdict. The Weinstein case was the landmark that propelled the Me Too movement not just in the USA but all over the world, including India. The founder of the Me Too movement, Tarana Burke, has remained defiant at the verdict and said it was not a blow but a clarion call that would be answered. So what does this development mean for women? and how are cases relating to sexual assault being dealt with in India. Earlier this week, I spoke to Urvashi Basak, 
a practicing lawyer based in New Delhi, for her views on how the criminal justice system works for survivors of sexual assault. My first question to you is, as a lawyer, when you heard that this particular uh, conviction has gotten overturned, of course, he continues to be in jail for a separate rape case. But what was your reaction? What did you think? And how are you reading the case as a lawyer? Obviously, it's a setback. This Harvey Weinstein case also, the women who complained against him, they came out in 2017. That's right. October. Whereas all these cases happened much, much earlier. The impetus of uh, coming out from the shells, it happened because of the Me Too movement, which Tarana Burke started. So these cases came out. Mm -hmm. Now uh, he has been charged in uh, Los Angeles and New York. Right. But uh, the laws of uh, the two places are different. In uh, Los Angeles, you can bring other women uh, as witnesses in a particular uh, case. Even if they are not part of the Even if they are okay. not part. Mm -hmm. So that law is clear. But in New York, it is exactly opposite. You can't bring. Yes. Uh, but the judge allowed and uh, allowed a large number of women who were not part of uh, this, they came and testified. The charges conviction was upheld by the New York Court of uh, Supreme Court. But above that, there's another court that is the appellate court, that is the highest court of. Yes. Uh, so it overturned it and just because of this flaw yeah yeah uh -huh. but 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 the me too movement is something that you know you know had an impression even in india and then when something like this happens then don't you think women feel that you know what's the what's the point of even being brave enough to come out and testify yes right yes, yes. right yes that is there that is there what has your experience been like when it comes to sexual assault cases see i have fought sexual assault cases also uh, she is being threatened by the opposite party constantly and threatening can be anything you go to the court the gestures they will make they live in fear mm -hmm. and uh, they want to wrap it up so many of them withdraw so you think there is a need for better legislation for better legal uh, support for these survivors better legislation uh, should always be there but enforcement enforcement we lack in enforcement you know, prosecuting such cases is complex. What kind of changes would you say are required in the Indian legislative system? Uh, see, sexual assault cases, especially rape cases, uh, the evidence that takes place is uh, within camera, camera proceedings. It means outsiders won't come, outside lawyers won't come also. Only your lawyer would be there and the uh, prosecution lawyer will be there. And uh, in Delhi, they have started one vulnerable witness lawyer so there's a there's one female lawyer and uh, she'll sit and she'll keep on uh, encouraging her no don't break down and all those the questions that are being put to the girl very embarrassing questions and uh, in rape cases also uh, when the testimony take place that is evidence is taking place there's a barricade between the uh, lawyer and the this victim okay how do you react to this allegation that that laws are more favorable towards women when any such cases come uh, you'll see the attitude of the judge the judges uh, towards the victim okay huh. okay that is clear that is very much clear. but is it according to law or is it that uh, no, personal no no the uh, the training is like that you have to be empathetic towards the victim. Whether she is wrong or right, you have to be empathetic towards the victim. Ultimately, it is overturned. So that is a different thing, but you have to be empathetic towards the victim. This is an ongoing story. But at Strat News Global, we feel we must continue to have conversations around it. 
we cannot ignore the effect that this case will have on future victims of sexual violence. The consequences of what happened in the trial court in New York might make things that much harder for future victims of sexual violence to come forward to authorities. And with that, it's time to wrap up this week's Global Compass. But before we go, something to smile about. This story caught our attention. A performance by Sumana, a 17-year-old first-generation Indian-American from New Hampshire at a local festival this week. Interestingly, Sumana has already released her first music album called Once Upon a Time and another single called November Rain, which are now available on all music platforms like Apple Music, Spotify, YouTube Music, Amazon Music and more. Do listen to this budding Indian origin artist and have a wonderful week ahead. See you next Sunday. Bye-bye.